a very good evening students today's class we would be discussing about corrosion and specifically about rusting the word corrosion is more useful for metals it is not that corrosion is not used for non metals but metals react faster under the set of conditions which are required for corrosion corrosion is nothing but action of atmosphere on the metal now when we talk about atmosphere it is majorly air and when we talk about air the components can be oxygen could be carbon dioxide it could be sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide could be h2s these are the gases which are available in the atmosphere so virtually and of course not to forget you have moisture so the conclusion resides that action of atmosphere is when your metal is undergoing some kind of reaction with either of these gases or or even with moisture commonly affected corroded metals are firstly if you have a silver article and if you leave it in the air in the presence of air it generally turns black and the compound formed is silver sulfide silver has a valency 1 sulfur has a valency 2 so your compound the formula would be ag2s second commonly observed example is that of the copper metal if the copper metal is exposed to air then it turns green in fact this green compound is also called as melachite green and it is actually basic copper carbonate which is formed the formula of this basic copper carbonate is cuco3 copper when we say copper we very well know that copper has two valencies cuprous and cupric but when you are said that it's copper then it is plus 2 valency which is the most common one so when we talk about copper carbonate it is copper 2 plus so copper carbonate and we are talking about basic copper carbonate it also has some copper hydroxide to it which means in case of your copper the reaction is because of this green colored compound is formed which is also called as the melachite green in air the combining factors would be carbon dioxide you would have some oxygen and you would have moisture so the components needed to transform copper into the green colored compound are air out of which major components are carbon dioxide oxygen and moisture coming to the third very common example of corrosion which you normally also confuse with rusting rusting is specifically for iron whereas corrosion can be for any metal when it is undergoing a reaction with the atmosphere so when you talk about iron under the conditions of exposure to air it forms brown colored compound which is called as rust now this brown colored compound has a formula which is ferric oxide iron again has two valencies ferrous and ferric but when we talk about iron it is again ferrous but this time the oxidized product which is called as rust is ferric oxide so this formula would be iron with two valency from oxygen and oxygen gets a 3 and it is also known as hydrated ferric oxide this is your ferric oxide hydrated means it has to have some water molecules now this water molecule is not fixed it is not a crystalline salt to have fixed number of water molecules the water molecules are x means they are variable any number of water molecules can be attached to it and it leads to the formation of rust this brown colored coating which happens over iron is due to the action of air is called as rust and requirement from the air in this case it is clearly visible that you require oxygen and moisture both for it to give you the formation of rust 
Whereas in case of silver, since the compound formed is silver sulfide, from the air you require hydrogen sulfide gas which is required for the process and this hydrogen sulfide leads to the formation of iron sulfide which is black in color. So your corrosion of metals commonly dealt with are silver turning black, copper turning green, iron turning brown. Now I would be taking up the topic of rusting of iron a little more in detail. Coming to the topic of rusting of iron. Please excuse the diagrams. I am not too good at it. But I have tried my best to come to some kind of diagrams which are there for clearing up your concepts. Okay. I have taken test tube 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and there are 7 test tubes. In all the test tubes I have added an iron nail. In all of them you have an iron nail. And this iron nail we are trying to test whether rusting would happen or not under different set of conditions. Looking at the first, this test tube, first test tube, it is observed that you have the iron nail is kept in an open test tube. Now since it is an open test tube, you have an exposure of air. And if there is an exposure of air, you have oxygen as well as moisture. Hence, your iron does get rusted. You get a brown coating over it, which is indicative of the rust formation. Moving to the second test tube. In the second test tube, have a look. This solid kept in the test tube is anhydrous calcium chloride. Anhydrous means without water. Calcium chloride is one of the dehydrating agents, meaning it has a tendency to absorb moisture if at all present. Now since the test tube is corked, means whatever air is inside the test tube, that is the only air that is available. From the air, which means oxygen is available. Now, apart from that, the moisture if at all was there, this has been removed by the calcium chloride, hence you do not have any moisture in this test tube. And conclusion, you do not get any rusting. There was rusting here and there was no rusting in the second test tube because the availability was only for oxygen. There was no water in it. Coming to the third test tube. The third test tube as you can see is another test tube which is half filled with water and half is left over. Since half is left over, you have air which means you have oxygen. Water you have added, so it, you have water also. So since you have water as well as oxygen, it is observed that this also undergoes rusting. In the third test tube, again we have rusting taking place. Coming to the fourth test tube. In the fourth test tube, the water that is present is normal water. And you have oil over it. I have deliberately given it a yellow shade. Let us assume that we have taken mustard oil. So, upar se agar mustard oil hai, which means your air is above the mustard oil. Jo hawa hai, uska oxygen cannot enter into the water. But as you very well know, any sample of water would automatically have oxygen in it. We have proofs. Pani mein oxygen gas hoti hai. Tabhi to aquatic life possible hai. Jitni bhi fishes alive hai is only because oxygen pani mein hota hai. I am not talking about this oxygen. Any water sample has got dissolved oxygen in it. So it is this dissolved oxygen which is also present in it. Hence, in this particular test tube, you have water which is visible. You also have the oxygen dissolved in it. This air is not able to enter. That's fine because you don't require it because you have oxygen already in the test tube. Hence, it leads to rusting. So, your fourth test tube would also have rusting happening because of the presence of water as well as oxygen. So, the fourth test tube, you again have rusting taking place. Coming to the fifth test tube. Have a closer look at the fifth test tube. This time, I have taken boiled water. Now, if I boil water, oxygen escapes. If you boil it, all gases which are dissolved in a liquid escape on boiling. 
I give you an example for it. If you think of Coke, the cold drink that you are loving to have. So, if you have you ever thought of serving hot cold drink in a winter month? No, you never do that. The reason is, as soon as you heat the cold drink, the aerated soft drink, the carbon dioxide escapes. So, your soft drink is no more aerated. So, whenever you heat any water sample, whatever gases are dissolved in it, it would move out. So, boiled water has no oxygen. Hence, your boiled water sample in test tube number 5 is lacking in oxygen. Therefore, you only have water in it and there is no oxygen. There is air here, but the air cannot enter. The reason being there is a oil layer which cuts off the supply of air into the water. Now, since there is only water, no oxygen, it was observed, there was no rusting happening in test tube 5. Moving to test tube 6. In your test tube 6, you have only boiled water up to the brim, which means there is no air. In this test tube, you have boiled water again, which is not having any oxygen. As soon as you boil the water, oxygen escapes. So you are only left with water in it. There is no oxygen and there was no rusting again. In test tube number 6. Coming to the last test tube. In last test tube, I have taken normal water sample. And in the normal water sample, which is up to the brim, which means there is no air. There was no scope of air in this test tube, but we very well know any water sample would have oxygen dissolved in it. Therefore, you again have both water and air. Air, that is the oxygen component, and this would also lead to rusting. So, out of your five set of experiments, we find rusting happening in test tube 1, test tube 3, test tube 4, and test tube 5. And the conditions required for rusting of iron are clear that you require air, which is actually your oxygen gas, as well as moisture, which is water. In the presence of these two only, you lead to the formation of rust. And the formula for rust is ferric oxide hydrated. Some number of water molecules are there which is not fixed. So, I conclude my class of corrosion of metals as well as rusting of iron in detail. With this, I come to the end of my class. If you like the video, please share it. Thank you. My next class would be on redox reactions. Goodbye.